Lauren from tastypc.tv and this is my first Hardware Heaven video and I'm really excited to be joining the team. So today I'm reviewing Fractal Design's Define R4 case um, and I've had the R3 for quite some time now, I've been using it as my personal rig. So it will be interesting to see what improvements Fractal Design have made. So the R4 is available in either Black Pearl, Titanium Grey or Arctic White and I'm going to be looking specifically at the Black Pearl version. So let's get started. Starting at the front I.O. ports, we've got the headphone and microphone jacks, the reset button, the power button, two USB 3 ports and two USB 2 ports. Now I have to say I really love the feel and quality of the on button. It's like what you'd expect to find on a piece of high-end audio equipment. I also really love the design of the power LED which runs around the power button and then comes in this cutout down the front door. The front door itself is made of plastic, but it's got this really nice brushed aluminium finish. The door is held closed by reasonably strong magnets, and the hinge is pretty sturdy. So on the inside of the front door it's covered in noise dampening foam, and here we've got two 5.25 inch optical base. We've also got a little switch that lets you control whether you want the two included fans, plus an additional fan to run at 12, 7 or 5 volts. Here we've got a plastic ventilator cover that once you unclick, hinges from the bottom. Behind that we've got the dust filter um, and the two 120mm or 140mm fans, although only one has been included. And to fit the fans you unclip the top mount and then you can click the fan straight in. And as long as you remember to leave some slack on the fan cables, you can easily remove the dust filter, which is a lot easier than with the R3 where the dust filter was attached to the fans. And these fans just intake air through the ventilation holes down the side. Taking a look at the top of the case, there's two 120mm or 140mm fan mounts, and these are covered by module vents. Fractal Design have made the spacing correct to be able to fit a 240mm radiator. However, because of the clearance inside the case, there's not actually enough space to be able to fit a radiator and fans. So what I would have liked to have seen Fractal Design do is offset the fan mount slightly in this direction like they did with the Arc Mini. Um, it wouldn't look as nice but it would allow enough clearance for liquid coolers such as a H100 but also for thicker water cooling radiators. Taking a look at the back of the case we've got some ventilation holes, we've got space to mount either 120mm or 140mm exhaust fan, we've got seven expansion slots and an 8 vertical one for fitting things like fan controllers. Looking at the bottom of the case, we've got this large removable dust filter that covers the bottom power supply and 120mm or 140mm fan mount. Um, this fan mount is much better than the over-engineered one used in the R3. We've also got four chrome AV style feet with rubber bottoms. These help prevent vibrations but also damage to your desk. Moving on to the side of the case, it's completely plain apart from the 120mm or 140mm fan mount, which is covered by what Fractile Design like to call Modulent. Moving the side panel is easy, you just undo the two thumb screws at the back of the case, and it slides straight off. Looking at the inside of the side panel, it's covered in a thin but dense amount of bitumen, which is a high quality sound dampening material. Um, this is the modulant, which is pretty much a plastic square covered by the same noise dampening foam found in the inside of the front door of this case, and it's supposed to restrict noise going through the unused fan mounts. I have seen a lot of reviewers rave about how good the sound dampening of this case is and they say that when it's used with ultra quiet parts they get a pretty much silent rig. Unfortunately I feel that the only reason why they get an almost silent rig is because of the fact that they are using ultra silent parts. And in the sound test that I did with the R3 I found that the noise dampening made very very little difference to the noise levels um, and that if anything it just made the noise slightly deeper rather than quieter. Um, but this is only what I can hear, you might be able to hear something different. And I haven't backed up the results yet, um, I haven't repeated the tests I did with the R3 with the R4, but the R4 does use the exact same noise dampening material as the R3. Um, but I don't think this is necessarily down to Fractal Design's noise dampening being ineffective, but more that just PC case noise dampening across the market is less effective than what people expect. 
Um, but moving away from the noise dampening, I have to say this is one of the sturdiest side panels that I've ever come across. Taking a look at the inside of the case, the two 5.25 inch optical bays aren't tallest, which is something that I would like to have seen from a case at this price point. The bottom one comes with a 3.5 inch adapter, and below that we've got eight hard drive trays, which can support either 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch hard drives or solid state drives, and the drives mounted using the anti-vibration mounts. Um, one thing that I did notice with the R3 was that it wasn't very good at isolating hard drive vibrations, especially with 7200 RPM drives, and I'm really hoping that the R4 doesn't have the same issue, as it uses the exact same hard drive tray design. So this top hard drive cage is removable using the two thumb screws, you can also rotate it this way to help channel the airflow over your hard drives and straight onto your graphics cards. The bottom hard drive cage is also removable using the four screws accessible from the bottom. It also has a second mounting location, but I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Moving over to the power supply area, you've got a little anti vibration pad here and four little anti vibration feet. Now, I know that good power supplies don't really vibrate anymore, but I have always wondered why case manufacturers don't also put an anti vibration pad here where the power supply touches the motherboard tray. So this case can support either mini ITX, micro ATX or ATX motherboards and it can also fit seven 120mm or 140mm fans. Two in the front, one in the bottom, two in the top, one here and one on the side panel. The top 120mm or 140mm fan mounts are also covered by removable module vents. Now out of the box my sample has got a less than perfect finish. I don't know if it's just the case with the sample I received, but I thought it was something worth pointing out. So I have now moved the bottom hard drive cage to its alternative position. You do lose the bottom 120mm or 140mm fan, but you can now put a thin 240mm radiator in the front, or with some modding a thin 280mm radiator. Or instead, if you wanted to, you, just, you could just completely remove the bottom hard drive cage altogether, put a thicker radiator in the front, and then you can still mount two 2.5 inch solid state drives on the back of the motherboard tray using the mounts there. The opposite side panel is completely plain and has the same bitumen sound deadening material on the inside. Here you've got space for cable management and you've got a clearance of 26mm for your cables, which is much bigger than with the R3. You've also got a gap between the hard drive cages and the motherboard tray for cable management and you've got plenty of space behind the back of the hard drive cages for the hard drive cables. The cable management grommets are a much higher quality than with the other fractal design cases that I own. They're stronger, they're not going anywhere, and I think this is a much needed improvement. You've got plenty of places for cable ties, and the front I.O. cables and the two included fan cables are all black, but the fan cables are also braided. So here you can fit two 2.5 inch solid state drives, which is great if you're also planning on using eight hard drives or solid state drives, or removing the main two hard drive cages. You've also got a large cutout to fit a CPU cooler backplate. So what I'm going to do now is put a system inside the R4. So I have now built a system inside the Define R4, and it's quite an enjoyable case to build in. I'm using the Fractal Design Newton R3 power supply, and you've got 170mm to fit a power supply before covering the bottom fan mount, which I haven't used in this build. Um, but if you're not worried about losing that bottom fan, then you can fit a power supply up to 270mm long. I'm using a GTX 580, which shows you just how much space you've got to fit a graphics card, even with the top hard drive cage still in. Um, and with it in, you've got 295mm for a graphics card, and with it removed, that goes up to 430mm. In the end, I did manage to fit the H100 in this case, but it completely came down to the motherboard that I used. And this just shows you the limitations of the space between the motherboard and the roof of the case. I mean, the memory is literally millimetres away from the fan blades, um, and I wasn't able to use the other memory slots. So there are some motherboards that will allow you to fit something like H100, but overall you are just going to struggle fitting random fans into the roof of this case, which to me is a massive disappointment. I mean, I know that Fractile Design have completely redesigned the front of this case, allowing you to remove the bottom hard drive cage um, and therefore fit a Radon fans in the front. I just feel like they've neglected the top of the case a little bit, because if they just made the case slightly bigger so that it had clearance, I know that it'd appeal to a much wider audience. 
but you can fit a CPU air cooler with a height of 170 millimeters if you don't fit the fan on the side panel. Moving on to the hard drive trays, I mentioned that the R3 had an issue isolating hard drive vibrations. Um, and I'm glad to say that the R4 doesn't have the same issue. Firstly, the hard drive tray design is actually slightly different, but also there's now holes running down the side of the hard drive cage, where you can use thumb screws to secure your hard drives into place. Looking at the back of the R4, you can see that there's plenty of space for cable management. Unfortunately, I'm not the best here. So I fit the two 2.5 inch solid state drives for you to be able to see. Um, and this leaves me with two free hard drive trays for future additions. Moving on to the conclusion, I found it really difficult deciding what award to give the Define R4. I mean, I really love the case, it's so close to being perfect, but the fact that you can't comfortably fit a rad and fans in the roof is just completely unacceptable, especially something like an Arc Mini, which is a fraction of the size, can comfortably do so. But saying that, I would recommend this case to anyone who's planning on using an air cooler in their rig. And given that, and this case's build quality and its price, um, the Fractal Design Define R4 gets the recommended award. Um, but if you are looking for a more extreme rig, then I would recommend looking at other cases before making your final purchasing decision. But if Fractal Design ever do make something like an R5, hopefully they will make the case slightly taller to allow clearance for you to be able to comfortably fit rad and fans in the roof. Um, but that was my review of the Fractal Design Define R4. I hope you liked my first video for Hardware Heaven. Don't forget to subscribe to see more hardware and gaming videos. And thanks for watching.